Hi and welcome back to Economics A Level on YouTube. This video is going to be concerned with looking at the factors that cause the supply curve to move to the left or to the right. In the last video we looked at the law of supply and the relationship between price and quantity and how that determined the shape of the supply curve. So if you want to recap that, click on the link now to go back to that. In this video we're going to look at the external factors that cause the supply curve to move to the left or the right and then we're going to analyse why the supply curve shifts and what causes that. So first of all then, just to recap from the last video, that price is a factor that determines supply, but that a change in price just moves us either up or down along that supply curve. The other factors of supply, those that are on the screen now, all cause the supply curve to shift either to the left or to the right if one of them changes. So for example, if there was unexpectedly bad weather during the growing season for corn in the UK, then if all of the things were equal, the supply of corn in the UK would fall for that year and we would show that by drawing a leftwards shift on the supply curve. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look through a few of these and see how they either increase or decrease supply. We would show increases in supply by moving the supply curve to the right on our price and quantity axis. So you can see that on the graph there. So let's analyze some increases in supply and how it affects the supply curve. Let's firstly take the example of a falling cost of production. If, for example, the minimum wage was reduced in the United Kingdom and a company employed people on an hourly basis and was paying them that minimum wage, the company would experience a fall in their costs of production. Now, all other things being equal, the firm's budget then would go further and they would choose to increase the supply of that product in order to have a bigger percentage of market market sales and to try and beat their competition by offering perhaps a lower price. And you can see therefore on the graph that the supply curve will move, will shift to the right in that example. So when there's a falling cost of production, there should be an increase in the amount of supply and the supply curve will shift to the right. Let's take a second example. Let's say a cartel such as OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, let's say they met and they allowed an increase in the production quota of oil. If that happened, there would then be an increase in supply of oil on world markets and the supply curve as seen on that graph will again shift to the right. Let's take another example and let's look at the profitability of goods in joint supply. So a good in joint supply means that if you supply one good, something else is supplied with it. So let's use the example of beef that comes from cows, cattle, and leather, which also comes from a dead cow, doesn't it? Because it's the skin of that dead cow. If there was an increase in demand for beef, there would therefore be more cattle that are killed to meet that demand for beef. And as a consequence, the good in joint supply, which is leather in this case, would see an increase in the supply of leather because if there are more cattle being killed for beef production, then there's going to be an increase in the amount of dead cattle that you can harvest the leather from. So therefore, the supply curve for leather in this case will shift to the right. We will analyse joint supply in a separate video and it will make more sense when demand and supply put together on the same graph and the example is done that way. But for now, if a good in joint supply becomes more profitable, Profitable, i.e. if the production of beef becomes more profitable, there will be an increase in the byproduct of beef production, which is the leather from the cattle, and the supply curve will shift to the right. So each time the supply curve shifts to the right, and this applies if we only draw a supply curve and no demand curve with it, as we are doing to analyse basic supply, then we say that if the supply curve shifts to the right, at any given price there will be a greater quantity supplied. And we're saying at any given price, because you can take any price along that y-axis. So for example, let's take P. You can see that where it hits the original supply curve, there's quantity Q produced. But if you shift the supply curve to the right, at that price, there will be a greater quantity Q1 produced. And that's how we should analyze and explain what happens when supply increases, shifts to the right, when we're drawing only supply curves without demand curves. So we should say that at any given price, the quantity supplied increases. The inverse is true for reductions in supply. So for example, if a firm's cost of production increase, they will cut supply, supply shifts to the left this time, and at any given price, there will be a lower quantity supplied. 
Let's take an example of a natural disaster or war. Let's say that a war involves the bombing of civilian areas and some factories and farms get bombed, then the production of whatever those factories and farms made would fall. The supply curve would then shift to the left and as seen on the graph at any given price there will be less quantity supplied. Of course supply will fall if you've bombed a factory or a farm because then that factory production is destroyed and there isn't the capacity to make as many of whatever the product was as before. If we take an example of the objectives of sellers, if they turn towards profit maximization, sellers and producers therefore would restrict the amount of supply they produce in order, and this is when plotted with the demand curve on, so it's not fully clear from this at the moment, but in order to raise the price of their product. If there's a lower supply of it, there should be a higher price. Let's take another example. If we expect there to be a future shortage of production, then the current supply into a market will be reduced in order to stockpile the product now in case of a future shortage. So if the future expectation production wise is that there's going to be a shortage, supply in the present period of time will shift to the left and decrease because of the need to stockpile in case of future shortage. The final example we'll use here is that if a substitute in supply, i.e. let's say a farmer grows carrots and a substitute for that is potatoes, if the substitute, the potatoes, become more profitable to produce, then the farmer, if it's possible for him or her to do so, will switch production from carrots to potatoes and the supply of carrots will therefore reduce and we'll see a shift leftwards in supply. As before, when we're just drawing a supply curve alone without the demand curve and we shift the supply curve then we will say that after that shift at any given price the quantity supplied has decreased. And you can see that on this graph. At the price P we hit the original supply curve at point Q and once we have shifted the supply curve to the left at that given price there is less quantity supplied Q1. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to put the demand and the supply curves together in one graph and we're going to analyse how equilibrium price comes about and what it means. So if you want to go to that video immediately, click on the link now. If not, please click on the link below to view all the other videos in this series and to like and subscribe and see you next time.